Back inside uh, the Soyuz TMA-12 as uh, the commander, Sergei Volkov, uh, on the left side of your screen and uh, Oleg Kononenko on the right side of your screen, seated to Volkov's left, uh, continue uh, to run through their checklists as uh, the countdown has uh, now reached the T-minus 36-minute mark. Uh, technicians are uh, taking a look at uh, a possible problem uh, with one of the zippers on Volkov's suit that apparently uh, broke. Uh, the pressure in his suit uh, temporarily dropped, then uh, was restored to normal. Uh, so they're uh, just uh, in the process now of verifying uh, that uh, we have good suit pressure integrity uh, for Volkov's suit as the countdown proceeds toward launch at 6.16 a.m. Central Time this morning. Once uh, the launch occurs, Volkov, uh, who is serving today as Soyuz commander under the uh, call sign of Iradnus, uh, which is a, a constellation uh, that uh, represents a very long winding river starting at the left uh, foot of uh, the Orion constellation to the north, sweeping south of uh, Taurus uh, to the west edge of Cetus uh, in the sky. Uh, Volkov uh, and Kononenko is the onboard Soyuz flight engineer, will oversee several orbital correction maneuvers using thrusters on the spacecraft to adjust the altitude and trajectory relative to the International Space Station as it uh, begins uh, the chase to rendezvous and dock to the complex on Thursday morning. Technicians uh, down at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan uh, continue uh, to provide status reports. Those status reports on uh, vehicle processing and uh, the most critical phases of the countdown are ongoing as we approach the T-minus 33-minute mark into the countdown. Да, 
As uh, we continue uh, to watch uh, the Russian Mission Control Center in Korolyov outside Moscow, where Russian flight controllers will take over uh, the control of the flight of the Soyuz TMA-12 once it reaches orbit and its uh, solar arrays and uh, navigational antennas are deployed. In the last couple of hours, some of the critical milestones leading to the launch have included the activation of systems for the health checks of the radio communications, the thermal control and motion control systems of the uh, Soyuz rocket and the Soyuz TMA-12 capsule. The first stage of the Soyuz rocket has four liquid-fueled engines strapped to the side of the core vehicle. Each burns for about 1 minute 58 seconds. The core engine also serves as the second stage engine and continues to burn until about the 4 minute 58 second point of the Soyuz's climb to orbit. The third stage has a single engine that will burn for about 4 minutes and 2 seconds, shutting down at the 9 minute mark of the flight. At this point, the Soyuz uh, arrives into initial orbit of about 143 statute miles at its apogee, about 118 miles at its perigee, and uh, the automated process of deploying the TMA-12 capsules arrays and navigational antennas uh, begins. From that point on, there will be a series of uh, rendezvous maneuvers uh, to begin to catch up to the International Space Station. In fact, there are two uh, mid-course correction burns uh, that are scheduled today, a third one tomorrow uh, before uh, the vehicle moves into its automated rendezvous operations on Thursday that will lead to a docking to the International Space Station just after 8 a.m. Central Time on Thursday. At the time of launch today, uh, the International Space Station will be flying over the Pacific Ocean just west of Pitcairn Island. Inside 30 minutes now to the launch of the Soyuz TMA-12, Inside the capsule itself, uh, Station and Soyuz Commander Sergei Volkov is in the center seat. Flight engineer Oleg Kononenko is strapped into the left seat as the onboard engineer. And South Korean spaceflight participant So Yun Yi is in the right seat. The 23 and a half foot long Soyuz spacecraft uh, weighs almost 16,000 pounds, is composed of three modules. At the very top is the orbital module. At the bottom is the instrumentation and propulsion module, and sandwiched in between the descent module in which the crew resides for launch and landing. That's the only one of the three components that returns to Earth. After the spacecraft reaches orbit, its solar array wings are deployed, spanning almost 35 feet, the entire spacecraft nestled inside a protective shroud at the top of the Soyuz booster that is jettisoned about three minutes after launch. The crew uses the orbital module, sometimes known as the habitation module, during on-orbit operations. That includes the docking mechanism, the hatch, and the rendezvous and navigation antennas. The uh, descent module contains personally contoured couches for the crew members during launch, reentry, and landing. This module contains all of the controls and displays necessary for critical flight activities, contains uh, the life support provisions, the batteries for reentry and landing, and the parachutes and the landing engines that fire just prior to touchdown to soften the Soyuz's uh, landing on the steppe of Kazakhstan. The instrumentation and propulsion module houses the oxygen and storage tanks, the attitude control thrusters, and the communications and control equipment, as well as the avionics equipment that is used for primary guidance, navigation, and control, as well as the computer systems for the entire spacecraft.